big fish all the time. Now, what you want to do is you want to ah the lure. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to this episode of Mental with Fishing Adventures. Uh, first things first, make sure you subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, and uh, we're going to be talking about some of my favorite lures uh, for Lake Winnipeg. Good old greenbacks. So, um, the, probably the most common lure people will use is a rattle bait. And there's such a wide variety of rattle baits. I have a few here, I'll show you. But their prices range from anywhere between like seven oh, to like $30, $40. Um, each manufacturer kind of puts their own little twist on it. Uh, different color patterns, you know, different materials, different build qualities. So these are on the higher end ones. The live target is probably the number one most common Lake Winnipeg lure. If you aren't catching fish with this, you might as well pack her up and go home because there's no fish in the lake. Jackal it makes really high end quality lures too. So they actually use tungsten. So when this thing's actually rattling, it's got a tungsten nose on it. So what happens is it'll actually just sit right on the spot versus if you are twitching it with another lure, it'll just come up and down. Because the weight is forward heavy, it'll just sit right on the spot and kind of bounce back with the horse. But Rattle baits are good for calling in the fish. Lake Winnipeg doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of structure. So it's not like you're on like a 15 foot drop off that goes to like 20 feet where you can just be using a jigging minnow waiting for them to cruise around. A lot of times they're kind of a big bowl. Yes, there is structure on some of the different parts of the lake, but for the most time you're fishing kind of the mouth or on the west side and shallow area. There isn't a whole hell of a lot of structure. So the rattle baits are great for calling in the fish. Now, once you actually have the fish in, if you're using your flash and you can see them and they're not biting, this can be from a really cold day or they're not really in the aggressive mood. A lot of people will go to a spoon. So here's a few, for example. Mips and a Pelican. Pelican's actually a local company. They make all the lures here. They're nice. What you do, or what I do personally, is I take a salted minnow and I kind of wrap it around the hook. So I'll put the head on, turn it, put the body on, turn it, put the tail on. So it's kind of like a circle on the hook. And when you rip these up, and let it drop, they'll flutter down and they're a much more finesse approach for walleye. So if you have them on the rattle baits and they're right on your hook, they're not biting, not biting, not biting, try throwing on a spoon. Because a lot of the times it's just a little bit of a slow fall and they'll come up and they'll absolutely smoke your lure. And then kind of the hybrid between the two is you have rattling spoons. So Extreme, another uh, local company, this has been a super, super hot seller for Lake Winnipeg, the uh, Purple Punch. So it's got tinsel on it and it's actually got a rattling chamber inside the spoon. So this is kind of the best of both worlds where you kind of get a rattle to kind of call them in or you're bouncing off bottom, but you kind of get that fluttering action like you would with a regular spoon. Um, Northland Buckshots are really popular ones too. A lot of people use those. They come in a wide variety of colors. Lindy Ratlin Flyers. Um, so they're kind of a hybrid between the two. And then you can never beat a good old jig and a minnow. Over here we got a whole bunch of different color and size and just design jigs. This is a Stinger jig. So if you go down here, this clip right here, if you can see that, actually clips onto that little knuckle right there on that hook. And what that does is that adds a hook right here at the very end, right? Like that. So when you have a minnow on, you can have the head hooked and also have the tail hooked. So when the fish comes, they're being really finesse. They can actually grab this stinger hook and you're actually gonna have a better hookup ratio. Some people call it cheating. Hey, if you're catching, it doesn't matter. Um, that's kind of it for what I use. There's, every year people come out with different uh, baits and different new techniques and different game changers, but this is kind of your fundamentals. Um, another kind of important tip, rods can be really important. So for rattle baits, you want a little bit of a stiffer rod because you're constantly ripping it up and down. So this is like a 36 inch medium heavy, which is super common size and action rod. So you look here, it's kind of got a soft, softer tip, but then it gets right into the backbone right here. So when you rip that rattle bait, you're not actually using the whole rod. And that way, when you do need to set the hook into a fish, you have that soft tip that's always cushioned, but you have that backbone if you need to force them in. Um, for just jigs and stuff, when you're going nice and, once again, finesse, or even spoons, you need a with like a 30 inch medium, right? It's a little bit softer, not quite as stiff, um, but works very well for feeling the bite. A lot of these rods too are becoming much nicer, made of completely graphite, so it makes it more sensitive and lighter. Um, but if all else fails, one more thing, actually, forgot to say that, line, Ford Chevy. Braided mono, I like braided because there's no stretch at all. And when you set the hook, when you lift up a foot with braid, you lift up a foot. Now, it's kind of hard to imagine, but monofilament stretches. So say if a fish bites your hook right here and you're 10 feet up on the ice, and you actually set the hook with braided, say you lift your rod two feet, you pull that line up two feet. If you do that with mono, you set the hook for two feet, you're actually probably only pulling up a foot, foot and a half because that mono is stretching. 
So it can help with hook sets um, with mono because it kind of gives you a little bit more comfort and cushion room where it might just have the hook but it's stretching to kind of cinch in that hook. But with rattle baits and stuff, with the braided line, if you rip in and set the hook, you're setting that hook. Um, and if all else fails, boom. This is gonna catch you some fish. But yeah, so we're waiting for the ice to form. I uh, hope you guys, if you're getting out, you're staying safe, staying safe with COVID, wear your masks. We're trying to stop this crazy virus, but uh, if you like the video, thumbs up, leave some comments down below, and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode of Manitoba Fishing Adventures.